Hi guys, it's July 1, 2018. I'm going to read a lot of this. If you don't want to listen to me, click on the link below, The Soviet Art of Brainwashing. And as I read this, and this pertains to psychiatry, mental health, here in America, when I read this, you will see that much of what I'm reading has come true. And while I'm reading, you can extend what I am reading to every institution, every federal agency. And the mess we are in today, the chaos, confusion, all of the left-right uh, hatred, uh, it's like, okay, people have been so easily manipulated here in our country. And it's so sad to see how easily manipulated people are. And people who know who they are, who have done that work to grow, to mature, to find out who they are, they've reevaluated those beliefs that they have, they've cleared up a lot of the issues that they've had, uh, that they acquired from childhood. They've done that self-reflective work. They've looked at their dark side, their shadow. They have confronted their shadow. Those are the people who know who they are. They are not easily manipulated. In fact, they see right through all of the people who have not done that work. They can see very clearly that, wow, okay, they don't know who they are. They say things, but what they say does not match what they do. And they're pretty much robots doing the exact same thing every single day and not growing, not maturing, still kind of stuck in seventh grade. And they don't much like the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You know, that whole truth that includes the individual themselves, that they've looked at their own truth, okay. And that is, uh, okay, July 4th, fireworks, if you hear them, I apologize. Um, that is one of the main reasons why we are living this nightmare. The Soviet art of brainwashing. I am reading this because we are living this. And I believe that we are living a communist Zionist takeover. And unfortunately, they're at the end. So, what is the Soviet art of brainwashing? What is psychopolitics? Psychopolitics, it's, it's the art and science of asserting and maintaining dominion over the thoughts and loyalties of individuals, of officers, bureaus, and masses, and the effecting of the conquest of enemy nations through mental healing. I'm going to read much of the editorial note as well as the address by Lavrent Pavlov Pavlovich Pavlovich Beria. Who was Lavrent Lavrent, sorry. Pavlovich Beria. Oh, he was Stalin's right-hand man. He was Stalin's depraved executioner who still has a grip on Moscow. This was written in 2003. He raped countless young women. Um, and what was... People went into this house and learned that it was barriers and they found bones of his victims still hidden behind false walls or cemented into the masonry. A very depraved, twisted soul. He was the head of the secret police in the Soviet Union for 15 years. He was responsible for overseeing the murder of millions of Russians, some shot at night, 
others dragged off to the gulags. And I will link below to this article if you want to read more about this sick, twisted uh, individual. But, yeah, he gave the address to American students at the Lenin University on psychopolitics. The editorial note written by Kenneth Goff he says, from May 2nd, 1936 to October 10, 1939, I was a dues-paying member of the Communist Party, operating under my own name, Kenneth Goff, and also the alias John Keats. In 1939, I voluntarily appeared before the Un-American Activities Committee in Washington, D.C. I was a member of the Communist Party. I attended their school, which was located at 113 East Well Street, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and operated under the name Eugene Debs Labor School. There, they were trained in all phases of warfare, both psychological and physical, for the destruction of the capitalist society and Christian civilization. In one portion of our studies, we went thoroughly into the matter of psychopolitics. This was the art of capturing the minds of a nation through brainwashing and fake mental health. Mental illness, psychiatry, the mental health system here in our country is so phenomenally fake, false, sick, twisted, that it, it's, it is absolutely remarkable that so many people just can't see it. The subjecting of whole nations of people to the rule of the Kremlin by capturing their minds. We were taught that degradation of the populace is less inhuman than their destruction by bombs. For to an animal lives only once, any life is sweeter than death. The end of a war is the control of a conquered people. Conquered in the absence of war, the end of war will have been achieved without the destructions of war. And they've done it. They've, we don't live in the United States of America anymore. We live in, in a, in a tyranny, in a police state in a country that is rapidly becoming socialist well that's the that's the ACA for communist and look at what is happening in California they are at the forefront of changing California into a communist state during the past few years few years I have noted with horror the increase of psychopolitical warfare upon the American people. The brainwashing of our boys in Korea and then in the well-financed drive of mental health propaganda by left-wing pressure groups, wherein many of our states have passed bills which can well be used by the enemies of America to subject to torture and imprisonment those who preach the gospel of our Lord of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and who oppose the menace of communism and or who oppose the menace of communism. Any freedom loving individual opposes communism. Another example of the warfare that is being waged can be seen in the attempt to establish a mental Siberia in Alaska which was called for in the Alaskan Mental Health Bill. The bill within itself establishes such authority that it could be turned into a prison camp under the guise of mental health for everyone who raises their voice against communism and the hidden government operating in our nation. So this book, Psychopolitics, 
was used in underground schools and contains the address of Beria to the American students in the Lenin University prior to 1936. Yes, sick, twisted, evil people have long-term goals. <laughs> yeah, it is, it's from the Communist Manual of Instructions of Psychopolitical Warfare and was used in America for the training of communist, communist country. It's diabolical plot of the enemies of Christ in America and the enemies of freedom as they seek to conquer our nation by subjecting the minds of our people to their will by various sinister means. The manual of the Communist Party should be in the hands of every loyal American that they may be alerted to the fact that it is not always by armies and guns that a nation is conquered. So, this address by this sick, twisted, depraved torturer to American students at the Lenin University, then they come back to the United States to infiltrate institutions. And this has been going on for decades. American students at the Lenin University, I welcome your attendance at these classes on psychopolitics. Our chief goals, to produce a maximum of chaos in the culture of the enemy, is our first most important step. Our fruits are grown in chaos, distrust, economic depression, and scientific turmoil. At least a weary populace can seek peace only in our offered communist state. At last, only communism can resolve the problems of the masses. We must recruit and use all the agencies and facilities of mental healing. To achieve these goals, the psychopolitician must crush every homegrown variety of mental healing in America. Actual teachings of James Eddy and Pentecostal Bible faith healers amongst your misguided people must be swept aside. They must be discredited, defamed, arrested, stamped upon even by their own government until there is no credit in them and only communist oriented healing remains. You must work until every teacher of psychology, unknowingly or knowingly, teaches only communist doctrine under the guise of psychology. You must labor until every doctor and psychiatrist is either a psychopolitician or an unwitting assistant to our aims. You must labor until we have dominion over the minds and bodies of every important person in your nation. You must work until suicide arising from mental imbalance is common and calls for no general investigation or remark. With the institutions for the insane you have in your country prisons which can hold a million persons and can hold them without civil rights or any hope of freedom. And upon these people can be practiced shock and surgery so that never again will they draw a sane breath. You must make these treatments common and accepted and you must sweep aside any treatment or any group of persons seeking to treat by effective means. You must dominate as respected men the fields of psychiatry and psychology. You must dominate the hospitals and universities you must carry forward the myth that only a European doctor is competent in the field of insanity. In the early 80s, the field of psychology began to take a dark turn towards mental illness is a matter of biology, chemical imbalance, a theory that was discredited in the 70s didn't matter. I guess the American people were lost 
already. So they just accepted whatever the professionals wearing white coats told them. And soon after, Prozac hit the market, the cure for mental illness. The field of psychology went against went against its primary objectives, which was to, when you become a psychotherapist, you become a person who helps, facilitates your client's understanding of how the past, how the past affects the present. The past is always in the present if you're not aware and you've done no work to clear up those issues that you have. It's always present and it can be a very powerful force especially when one is unaware. It can inform your every decision so psychotherapy was it was the therapist's job to help that individual the client to become their authentic self which meant that they would have to do an awful lot of self-reflective work understanding their past so that they could understand their present that's been obliterated. Now, it's just psychotherapists, and I'm not talking about everyone, but I am talking about most. There are mechanics. That's it. A client comes in. Uh, they are either already diagnosed and taking medication, or they will be diagnosed and taking medication. And then they come in for symptom management. That's it. Because mental illness is, well, it's genetic, it's a matter of your biology, you've got a chemical imbalance. It has nothing to do with the past. It has nothing to do with that dysfunctional environment that you were brought up in. No. It's just a matter of biology. The field of psychology has really become something so foreign to me, I can't even, I don't recognize it. Psychopolitics is a solemn charge. With it, you can erase our enemies as insects. You can cripple the efficiency of leaders by striking insanity into their families through the use of drugs. You can wipe them away with testimony as to their insanity. You know, once you get into that mental health system, oh, it is very hard to get out. Now, when Prozac hit the market, psychiatry was claiming that it was going to cure mental illness. It cures not a thing. It actually induces more mental illness. But once diagnosed, there is no cure. You, know, you can have cancer and then not have cancer. Well, if you have an anxiety disorder, you have that forever. If you have that math disorder, yeah, it's in the DSM, the, the Bible of, of psychiatry that lists all the psychiatric disorders. If you're depressed, you're forever depressed. That's what the field of psychiatry and psychology has done. You are forever mentally ill. By our technologies you can even bring about insanity itself when they seem to resist it. And it looks like we're getting a manufactured thunderstorm. Great. By psychopolitics create chaos. Leave a nation leaderless. Kill our enemies and bring to earth through communism the great peace man has ever known. So, 
The Constitution of Man as a Political Organism, Chapter 2, Man is Already a Colonial Aggregation of Cells, and to consider him an individual would be an error. Like the individual man, the state is a collection of aggregations. The political entities within the state must, all of them, must cooperate for the greater good of the state. The tenets of rugged individualism, personal determinism, self-will, imagination, and personal creativeness are alike in the masses antipathetic. The mission of psychopolitics, first to align the obedience and goals of the group and then maintain their alignment by the eradication of the effectiveness of the persons and personalities which might swerve the group towards disaffection. Psychopolitics makes it possible to remove that art of his personality. Remove the individual from the individual. Common core, anyone? There are those who foolishly have embarked upon some spiritual Alice in Wonderland voyage into what they call the subconscious and the unconscious mind, and who, under the guise of psychotherapy, would seek to make well the disaffection of body organs. Oh, but it's lacking in success. In a nation under conquest, such as America, our slow and stealthy approach need take advantage of or take advantage only of the cycles of booms and depressions inherent in capitalist nations in order to assert of more and more strong control over individual wills. A boom is as advantageous, advantageous as a depression for our ends. For during prosperity, our propaganda lines must only continue to point up the wealth the period is delivering to the selected few to divorce their control of the state during a depression. One must only point out that it ensued as a result of the avarice of a few, of a few and the general political incompetence of the national leaders. And, well, much of that we've been hearing for decades. State goals for the individual masses, obedience and concurrence of the individuals. Where obedience fails, the masses suffer. Not always necessary to remove the individual. It is possible to remove his self-willed tendencies to the improvement of the goals and gains of the whole. An examination of loyalties. Loyalty means simply alignment. It means more fully alignment with the goals of the communist state. Disloyalty means entirely misalignment. And they talk about ways to align. One of the ways, electric shock treatment. And guess what? Shock treatment. Yeah, for the past, I'd say, 15 years, it is used increasingly so in the field of mental health and psychiatry. So not born out that electric shock has any therapeutic value so far as making the individual more sane. It is adequately brought out that its punishment value will create in the patient a greater cooperative attitude. Only effective and workable in introducing an adequate punishment mechanism to the personality to make it cease and desist from its courses and egotistical direction of the anatomy itself. They use punishment, force, brutality, and shock treatment is that. The first is accomplished by a steady and continuous indoctrination of the individual in the belief that his previous loyalties have been granted to an unworthy source. You place him under duress. 
defame him, degrade him. And once degraded and under duress, it is much easier to manipulate the individual. Milder methods is, well, there's a drawback in their practice because it requires time and con concentration and the manufacture of false evidence and a psychopolitical operator's time but the milder methods have been proven extremely effective which is hypnosis and well just a lot of think about if you know the characteristics of a pathological narcissist a lot of what the narcissist does to their victim are the milder methods to manipulate. They degrade them. They, they traumatize them. Um, but, yes, shock, surgery, duress, privation. Duress must have, in its first part, a defamation of the loyalties and in its second, the implementation of new loyalties. And there's an awful lot of people under duress today. Loyalty is entirely lacking in that mythical commodity known as spiritual quality. Loyalty is entirely a thing of dependence, economic or mental, and can be changed by the crudest implementations observation of workers in their factories or fields demonstrates that they easily grant loyalty to a foreman or a woman and then as easily abandon it and substitute another individual revulsing at the same time toward the person to whom loyalty was primarily granted. Capitalist or capitalistic states dependencies are so craven wants and privations are so exaggerated that loyalty is entirely without ethical foundation and exists only in the realm of dependency, duress, or demand. And you know what? That's true. In the case of a very important person, by the use of various drugs, entirely too easy to bring about a state of severe neurosis or insanity. You can bring it about in their children, in their wife, or in themselves. And once insane, or regarded as insane, they can degrade or entirely alter the personality of a family member and create in that person a psychopolitical slave subject. All to discredit important persons who are going against the communist goals. The psychopolitician has infiltrated every agency, every institution, infiltrated education, mental health, psychology, psychiatry, economics, universities, colleges, all over. Um, and those psychopoliticians who have been trained are always put in positions where they do have power, control, and yeah, we Americans, we regard people in power positions as respectable some envy people in power positions. We give them an awful lot of bowing time. And that's unfortunate because we are bowing and applauding, putting on pedestal simply because of the title that they have, the money that they have. We applaud and bow down to really very sick, depraved people who are destroying 
those that bow down to them. Sufficient embarrassment is what the psychopolitical operators will bring to those who are going against the communist goals, those who are not loyal to communism. The firm principle of psychopolitics that the person to be destroyed must be involved at first or secondhand in the stigma of insanity with a maximum amount of tumult and publicity. The stigma of insanity is properly placed at the door of such persons' reputations and is held there firmly by bringing about irrational acts either on his own part or in his vicinity, meaning friends or family. By bringing about insanity or suicide on the part of the wife of an important political personage, a sufficient misalignment has been instigated to change his attitude. Because insanity itself is a despised and disgraced state. So the psychopolitical operators must emphasize the horribleness of insanity. And it must be that the insane person never have any rights under law. No person who is insane may hold property. No person who is insane may testify. Those, uh, thus, I'm sorry, thus we have an excellent road along which we can travel toward our certain goal and destiny. So when you think about all of the politicians, let's say from the 80s on, who um, Michael, oh my God, I can't remember his last name. He was the governor of Massachusetts and his wife, Kitty Dukakis. Yes, Michael Dukakis. Remember what they did to Kitty? She was an alcoholic. They brought him down. They have done it to so many people. And how many people have been out trying to do the right thing and end up institutionalized and called insane. Too many. By bringing about public conviction that the sanity of a person is in question, it is possible to discount and eradicate all of the goals and activities of that person. Magnifying the general human reaction to insanity through keeping the subject of insanity itself forever before the public eye, and then by utilizing this reaction by causing a revulsion on the part of a populace against its leaders or leaders, against its leaders, it is possible to stop any government or movement. Instead of executing national leaders, suicide for them should be arranged. In the animal, the first loyalty is to himself. This is destroyed by demonstrating errors to him, showing him that he does not remember, cannot act, or does not trust himself. The second loyalty, family, his parents, brothers, sister. This is destroyed by making a family unit economically non-dependent by lessening the value of marriage, by making an easiness of divorce, and by raising the children whenever possible by the state. The next loyalty is to his friends and local environment. This is destroyed by lowering his trust and bringing about reportings upon him allegedly by his fellows or the town or village authorities. And the next is to the state. An awful lot of people have been so destroyed due to psychiatrists, psychotherapists, mental health directors around the country in these mental health community centers. And guess what? It was an executive order put out by George Bush Jr. to get those mental health community centers going 
and ubiquitous all over the country. Everything has a hidden meaning and God, this place has really become something that it wasn't last summer, but um, I don't know if you hear all the noise. So, all of it was purposeful, deliberate, and to get an awful lot of Americans diagnosed with mental illness. And what have, you know, Obama, anybody, anybody who has a guardian taking care of their finances can't own a gun. Anybody with mental illness cannot own a gun. Veterans with PTSD cannot own a gun. And people are being made violent and crazy due to the drugs and an awful lot of psychopoliticians in the field of psychiatry and mental health. So, um, deny the child any right in society by refusing to let him earn, by forcing him into unwanted dependence upon a grudging parent, by making certain in other channels that the parent is never in other than economic stress. The child can be driven in his teens to revolt. Delinquency will ensue. Look what Obama did with Obamacare. All parents have to keep their children on their health insurance until what age? It's somewhere like, I don't know, is it 26 or 25? That was a very clear social engineering to keep to keep everybody children. No, yes, 25, you're still a child. You know, in the 50s at 25, you were already married. You had a house, you had a good job, you had kids, and you were mature, no longer. By making readily available drugs of various kinds, by giving the teenager alcohol, by praising his wildness, by stimulating him with sex, literature, and advertising to him, or her practices as taught at the sex poll, creating the necessary attitude of chaos, idleness, worthlessness, into which, Jesus, I don't think that's allowed in apartment complexes, these fireworks. And if you can't hear it, well, good, but it's make a meat jump. Um, worthlessness, yeah, a lot of teenagers feel worthless and they're killing themselves. And yeah, the answer, communism, really? Okay. If we could effectively kill the national pride and patriotism of just one generation, we will have won that country. Millennials marching with signs. Down with capitalism, up with socialism and they have no clue what they're doing. Yes, the role of the psycho-political operator, very strong, very strong indeed. The general subject of obedience, obedience is the result of force. The most barbaric, unrestrained, brutal use of force, if carried far enough, invokes obedience, savage force, sufficiently long displayed toward any individual will bring about his concurrence with any principle or order. Show me your papers. Okay, okay, here. Don't beat me up, cop, please. Any organization which has the spirit and courage to display inhumanity, savageness, brutality, and an uncompromising lack of humanity will be obeyed. The IRS. The IRS law enforcement and look at what they're doing to the kids with all of these drills 
drills in schools, elementary schools, junior high schools, high schools. And they go in and they don't even inform some of the teachers or the children that it's a drill, active shooter drill. So they have an active shooter that go into schools and they have the police running around the school trying to get the active shooter. And these kids and teachers don't even know that it's a drill. Brutal. Savage. Inhumane. Obedience, you must have no compromise with humanity. If you would have obedience, you must make it clearly understood that you have no mercy. We find an individual refusing to obey and being struck. His refusal to obey is now less vociferous. He is struck again and his resistance is lessened once more. He is hammered and pounded again and again until at length, at length, his only thought is direct and implicit obedience to that person from whom the force has emanated. How many times have we seen cops beat the hell out of people, even innocent people, women, for nothing, for no reason? The stupidity of Western civilizations is best demonstrated by the fact that they believe hypnotism is a thing of the mind, of attention, and a desire for unconsciousness. This is not true. Only when a person has been beaten, punished, and mercilessly hammered can hypnotism upon him be guaranteed in its effectiveness. It is stated by Western authorities on hypnosis that only some 20% of the people are susceptible to hypnotism. This statement is very untrue. Given enough punishment, all of the people in any time and place are susceptible to hypnotism. By adding force, hypnotism is made uniformly effective. Where unconsciousness could not be induced by simple concentration upon the hypnotist, unconsciousness can be induced by drugs, by blows, by electric shock, and by other means like Hmm, 9-11, take down those towers, towers, the war on terror, the the millions of Americans who lost their homes due to bank fraud. And then our Attorney General Holder comes out and says, we're not going to prosecute the bankers for their fraud because it would hurt the economy. Really, Americans, that was okay? So, you have a criminal government, and still do, and one of the criminals was the Attorney General under Obama, Eric Holder, and he said, we will not prosecute bankers for their bank fraud, which which resulted in Americans losing their home due to the fraud of the bankers. Many went homeless. So your attorney general said, we will not follow the law. And therefore, more Americans are subject to losing their home. Terror. Anxiety duress, mechanisms of hypnotism demonstrate clearly that people can be made to believe in certain conditions and even in their environments or in politics by the administration of force. He can bring about implicit obedience. Subject of hypnotism, the subject of hypnotis hypnotism is a subject of belief. What can people be made to believe? They can be made to believe anything which is administered to them with sufficient brutality and force. TSA. Yes. You get sexually molested when you want to get on an airplane, and it's okay because you believe it's for your protection. 
The obedience of a populace is as good as they will believe. Despicable religions such as Christianity knew this. They knew that if enough faith could be brought into being a populace, brought into being, a populace could be enslaved by the Christian mockeries of humanity and mercy, and thus could be disarmed. One must only exhibit enough force, enough in humanity, enough brutality and savageness to create implicit belief and therefore and thereby implicit obedience. All of this is what we are witnessing in Americans today. The earliest Russian psychiatrist pioneering this science of psychiatry understood thoroughly that hypnosis is induced by acute fear. They discovered it could also be induced by shock of an emotional nature and also by extreme privation. That's why we keep hearing, water, it's scarce. And the extreme weather events caused by you using spray on air conditioner and driving your car. Um, it truly is amazing what Americans believe. But they are believing things that are actually killing their children, like the vaccine propaganda, psychiatric medications, ruining their health, destroying their health, even killing them. And somehow, in their hypnotic state, they cannot, they cannot attend to facts and evidence that you present them. They're hypnotized zombies. In order to induce a high state of hypnosis in an individual or a group or a population, an element of terror must always be present and the psychiatrist is aptly suited to this role. Peter Bregan, a psychiatrist, said at a conference, the most dangerous thing a human being can do today besides committing a crime is going to see a psychiatrist. And many people who go to see psychiatrists are being hypnotized, especially when they're put on psychiatric medication and made to do things that they would not ordinarily do if they were not under the control of these sick psychiatrists. A sufficient popular terror of the psychiatrist will in itself bring about insanity on the part of many individuals. A psychopolitical operative has no interest in therapeutic means or cures. That's why mental illness has not been cured by Prozac, but instead has increased exponentially. At the same time, so has the writing of psychiatric medication prescriptions that induce an awful lot of behaviors that then psychiatrists can then uh, slap another psychiatric disorder upon that individual and give them more medication. The greater number of insane in the country where he is operating, the larger number of the populace will come under his view, the view of the psychopolitical operative and the greater will become his facilities. Mounting into uncontrollable heights, he can more and more operate in an atmosphere of emergency, which again excuses his use of such treatments as electric shock, the prefrontal lobotomy, which essentially they don't have to do the surgery anymore. Psychiatric medications do just fine to give that prefrontal lobotomy. The emergencies, my God, put somebody on psychiatric medications and they then just go 
around and around the revolving door into psychiatric wards, back out into the streets, back into psychiatric wards, back out onto the streets. And, well, the treatment is pretty brutal in these psychiatric wards. Family, friends, everybody believes the guy or gal in the white coat. And, well, that person in the revolving door being thrown into a ward, being thrown outside, being thrown back in, nobody listens to them. They're mentally ill. For the sake of obedience on the part of the population and their general and their general reaction, a level of, or, or, I'm sorry, a level of brutality must, at all costs, be maintained. Only in this way can the absolute judgment of the psychopolitical operative as to the sanity or insanity of public figures be maintained in complete belief, using sufficient brutality upon their patients, the public at large will come to believe utterly anything they say about their patients. Psychopolitical operatives having under their control all psychology classes in the area can thus bring about a complete reformation of the future leaders of the country in their educational processes and so prepare them for communism to be obeyed one must be believed if one is sufficiently believed one will unquestioningly be obeyed a certain amount of fear or terror must be engendered in the person under treatment so that this person will then take immediate orders completely and unquestioningly from the psychopolitical operative, from the psychotherapist or the psychiatrist. Belief is engendered by a certain amount of fear and terror from an authoritative level, and this will be followed by obedience. Don't question authority, little children. Uh-uh. Because we've got a hidden agenda. And we want to take away all your rights and freedom and make you the slave of the rich elite. The entire field of human behavior for the benefit of the country can at length be broadened into abnormal behavior. Any eccentricity could be silenced by the authoritative opinion with some good fortune. It could bring the person into the hands of the psychopolitical operative so as to forever disable him. Eccentricity. What is that? If you're an individual today, if you behave differently than your, uh, from your friends or family, if you have a different view, opinion, take on things. You're eccentric. And you must be disabled. On the subject of obedience itself, the most optimum obedience is unthinking obedience. Command given must be obeyed without any rationalization on the part of the subject. You see Americans questioning cops or border patrol or questioning the police when they are uh, when they've come across these um, traffic stops what are they called I can't even think of it and it doesn't go very well for an awful lot who question authority and unfortunately most people don't because they're too scared and they're too, well, when you are an adult, but you've never really grown up, you're still a child, children submit to their parents' brutality to their parents' orders. So we have an adult population that has been so infantilized and the 
infantilization of the American people. God, did I see it in the early 80s when suddenly we were getting these commercials. And all of the, and we also had those politicians running for office who simplified everything for the American people because they would, well, you know, they just couldn't understand. But the commercials, cartoons for adults to sell products. Now, I've seen commercials that it's horrifying. White men in particular made to look like morons, doofuses, not even in seventh grade, more like second to fifth grade. It's horrifying. So when you infantilize a people, you keep them children. When you keep them on mommy and daddy's um, health insurance until they're 25, I think that's the age, I could be wrong, you infantilize them. You keep them children. So when you have children, it's easy to get them to obey. The command given must be obeyed without any rationalization, any rationalizing, rationalizing on the part of the subject. Commands implanted with the use of electric shock and drugs or heavy punishment. Wow. Psychopolitical activities have reached a certain peak. From there on, it is almost impossible to undo them for the population is already under the duress of obedience to the psychopolitical operatives and their dupes. The psychopolitical operatives must occupy every position which would be consulted by officials on any question or suspicion arising on the subject of psychopolitics. Thus, a psychiatric advisor should be placed near at hand in every government operation, in schools, in every community, the mental health centers, in corporations, in the military. They're all over the place. The anatomy of stimulus response mechanisms of man. Man is a stimulus response animal. His entire reasoning capabilities, even his ethics and morals depends upon stimulus response machinery. This has long been demonstrated by such Russians as Pavlov, and the principles have long been used in handling the recalcitrant, in training children, and in bringing about a state of optimum behavior on the part of a population, and Common Core is all about that. Having no independent will of his own, Man is easily handled by stimulus response mechanisms. It is only necessary to install a stimulus into the mental anatomy of man to have that stimulus reactivate and respond anytime an exterior command source calls it into being. This stimulus response, it's easily understood. The body takes pictures of every action in the environment around the individual. When the environment includes brutality, terror, shock, and other such activities, humiliation, shame. The mental image picture gained contains in itself all the ingredients of the environment. So if an individual is beaten and is told during the entirety of the beating that he must obey certain officials, he will in the future, feeling the pain the moment he begins to disobey. The installed pain itself reacts as a policeman, for the experience of the individual demonstrates to him that he cannot come back and will receive pain, pain from certain officials. So long as the individual obeys the picture or follows the commands of the stimulus implantation, he is free from pain. That is why we have seen the police through, uh, certainly after 9-11, beating the crap out of people for no reason, for uh, a, a, a slight infringement, for misdemeanors, 
arresting people for jaywalking. It's all to instill that picture that when you are confronted by the cop, you will obey. The Kozak method of breaking wild horses. I don't even want to read that because I, I, wow. I, I like horses. I don't believe in any of these methods. <laughs> That this, this sick, twisted, brutal breaking of the spirit so that that animal will, will obey your every order as if animals are put here for man. A sufficiently installed stimulus will thereafter remain as a police mechanism within the individual to cause him to follow the commands and directions given to him. Should he fail to follow these commands and directions, the stimulus mechanism will go into action. And it's one of the reasons why you see so many people submitting to being sexually molested by the TSA. Drugging the individual produces an artificial exhaustion. Oh, what's that? What is this about? The body is less able to resist a stimulus if it has insufficient food and is weary. Wow. Okay. So, our food no longer sustains our health. Weary, there's an exponential increase in insomnia. The frequencies, the Wi-Fi, smart meters, the cell towers, cell phones, deplete melatonin. And melatonin is necessary for that REM stage sleep, rapid eye movement, that deep, deep sleep where the individual is, is healing its body. And that's, that's the sleep that the individual, when they wake up, they feel rejuvenated. I don't know anybody who feels rejuvenated anymore. So it's why they use sleep deprivation as torture. Because people are far more susceptible to any kind of mind control when sleep deprived. Um, privation, meaning that the resources for the individual in order to sustain their life are scarce. So there's an anxiety that people feel. And duress, anxiety, fear, exhaustion, and not being in a good state of health or overall well-being, voila, you have people you can control. And drugs produce an artificial exhaustion. Psychiatric medications can ruin your sleep forever. And if he is drugged or shocked, beaten, and given a string of commands, his loyalties themselves can be definitely rearranged. So um, this, uh, I'm going to continue on for like 15 minutes. This is very, very long. But this is important to know so that you understand how they operate and when they are in positions of power in every institution well 
because we have so many people who don't want to understand and just want to live, you know, their delusions. That's why we're screwed. And I don't know, maybe I'm reading this just, I find it fascinating for one thing. And I think it's very important to understand what the hell we are living. Look at the left now where they're, you know, calling for civil war. And I will say this, I have a subscriber slash friend in Dallas and <laughs> She said something very, very funny. I think she started a meme on her Facebook page. Something about, I don't know, the right have millions and millions and millions of bullets. And the left, they're still trying to figure out what bathroom to use. The left, you guys are nuts. Bonafide, nuts, batshit crazy, you're not going to win. And I'm saying this as an ex-liberal, progressive Democrat, I don't know what it was, but that was this, that was the network, that was the world I traveled in. No, <laughs> you guys, the liberals, you start a civil war, you're going down fast. Because you just don't, you, you are really scared, little, wimpy, crazy people. All right. Um, what is scary in this is that they use psychiatrists and these uh, psychopolitical operatives to hypnotize their patients to make them do things that they wouldn't ordinarily do. They have sex with them. They can hypnotize them and get them to have sex with other people. They can then use those other people because they will have, you know, pictures or film or whatever, and they can blackmail them. And an awful lot of people are being blackmailed exercises in bringing about insanity seizures at will simply by demonstrating a signal to persons upon whom pain drug hypnosis has been used and exercises in making the seizures come about through talking to certain persons in certain places and times should be used. So think about that. Millions and millions and millions of Americans go to see a psychiatrist or a psychotherapist and they don't even know they're put on medication and they don't even know because they lack the understanding of how you can be hypnotized without somebody swinging a watch before your eyes and in that hypnotic state they are told what the trigger will be and then they go out in the world and that trigger arises they could kill the person or begin to have sex with the person. It could be anything. Exercises in sexual attack on patients should be practiced by the psychopolitical operative to demonstrate the inability of the pain drug hypnosis to recall the attack while indoctrinating a lust for further sexual activity on the part of the patient. You think about all of those teachers who are having sex with their students. Now these young female teachers who are having sex with these high school boys like it's nothing. So there is something so uh, unrestrained within them that they literally destroy their career very soon after taking on a teaching position. We've seen that over and over and over again. And I have to wonder, 
if they have been programmed to behave that way. But they can get a sexual liaison between females of a target family and the indicated males under the control of the psychopolitical operative and they can then um, have a weapon for the breaking down of familial relations and consequent public disgraces for the psychopolitical target. Just as a dog can be trained, so can a man be trained. The psychopolitical operative working in universities where he can direct the curricula of psychology classes. They are put in positions of power. Degradation, shock, and endurance. Degradation and conquest are companions. In order to be conquered, a nation must be degraded, either by acts of war, by being overrun, by being forced into humiliating treaties of peace, by the treatment of her populace under the armies of the conqueror, humiliation when you just want to travel by plane, humiliation when you are simply a parent who doesn't want to vaccinate their child, you get humiliated by the doctors, humiliated by friends, family, humiliation all over, all over. And we're, we are seeing a people so thoroughly degraded that they don't even, they don't know what's up, down, left, right, they're so lost, they have no regard for truth, facts, evidence. Degraded people. Well, demoralized, humiliated. That is the American people. Defamation is the best and foremost weapon. Continual and constant degradation of national leaders national institutions, national practices, national heroes must be systematically carried out. It is what we have been living. Founding fathers, racist, constitution, uh, degraded. Constitution, it's old, it's worn out. Heroes, degraded. You know, let's take down all of those statues of our history. We're, we're seeing it. It's in our face every single day. The realm of defamation and degradation of the psychopolitician is man himself. By attacking the character and morals of man himself and by bringing about, through contamination of youth, a general degraded feeling, command of the populace is facilitated to a very marked degree. Guess what? These children are being so unbelievably degraded in public school. Their creativity, their individuality, their critical thinking, all destroyed. Everybody's common. So those who excel never get the attention, they get the same attention as those who fail. This is insane. We have turned insane. And the curve of degradation, which leads downward to a point where the endurance of an individual is almost at end, and any sudden action toward him will place him in a state of shock. Like a soldier held prisoner can be abused, denied, defamed, degraded, until the slightest motion on the part of his captors will cause him to flinch. Similarly, the slightest word on the part of his captors will cause him to obey or vary his loyalties and beliefs, and given sufficient degradation, a prisoner can be caused to murder his fellow countrymen. 
Lower the endurance of a person, a group, a nation by constant degradation and defamation, it is possible to induce thus a state of shock which will receive adequately any command given. An enslavement of a population can fail only if these rebellious individuals are left to exert their individual influences upon their fellow citizens, sparking them into rebellion, calling into account their nobilities and freedoms. Yes, regard all of those who critically think, do research, weigh the evidence, and tell the truth. Shame them, insult them, and make intelligence something that is held in disrepute. Unless these restless individuals are stamped out and given into the hands of psychopolitical operatives early in the conquest, there will be nothing but trouble as the conquest continues. The officials of the government, students, readers, partakers of the entertainment must all be indoctrinated by whatever means into the complete belief that the restless, the ambitions, the natural leaders, are suffering from environmental maladjustments. Yes, they're insane. Degrading the general belief in the status of man, it is relatively simple, with cooperation from the economic salience being driven into the country, to drive citizens apart, one from another, to bring about a question of the wisdom of their own government, and to cause them to actively beg for enslavement. It seems in foreign nations that the church is the most ennobling influence. Each and every branch and activity of each and every church must one way or another be discredited. Religion must become unfashionable by demonstrating broadly that the soul is non-existent and that man is an animal. The lying mechanisms of Christianity lead men to foolishly brave deeds by teaching them that there is a life hereafter. The liability of courageous acts while living is thus lessened. May I read that again? By teaching them that there is a life hereafter. The liability of courageous acts while living is thus lessened. Program of degradation should at all times bring into question any family which is deeply religious, um, make everybody who's religious just a nutcase, insane. Long and arduous road for the psychopolitical operative to achieve this state of mind on the part of the whole nation. But no more than 20 or 30 years should be necessary in the entire program. Let me take it to an hour and a half. The Organization of Mental Health Campaigns, George Bush Jr. Get those mental health community centers all over the United States. Those, it would be for the better betterment of the community and when you have these mental health community centers every, there's a there's, there's a uh, there's a tie you know between everybody because everybody's living in the community so you then have an awful lot of programs at these mental health community centers and you offer a lot of services and then you get the whole community as much as the community as you can get to be involved. Mental health organizations must carefully delete from their ranks anyone 
actually proficient in the handling or treatment of mental health. I had a friend in Great Barrington, and she interviewed at this mental health center in Great Barrington. And I will tell you, that mental health community center was horrible. Horrible. And it, I, I was really stunned. She interviewed for a job, and I said, you're never going to get it. You think outside the box. You actually want to help people. She didn't get the job. She didn't get the job. But when you have these community centers and you have an awful lot of programs and you invite community members to come, listen, uh, and, well, people want to be good and they want to help those who are, you know, mentally ill. Oh, people shouldn't be stigmatized, so I'm going to show up at this meeting. And it's all to socially engineer people in that community. It's to get money from them as well. But here it also talks about how anybody who, and I did, so I was not very well liked at all. Because I said an awful lot to psychotherapists, psychiatrists, that they did not want to hear. So... Anybody who is not going along with the communist goals must be defamed and excluded as untrained, unskillful, quacks, perpetrators of hoaxes. No mental health movement with actual goals of mental therapy should be continued in existence in any nation. So they get governments involved, they have um, they have spawned an awful lot of mental health groups, they have lobbyists, they get money from government, they are so infiltrated and taken over. And any group hostile to these uh, psychopolitical operatives, well, give them drugs. A quiet injection of peyote, mescaline, or other drugs, and suddenly they begin to act in ways that seem insane. You call the police, you have them institutionalized, and voila, they're crazy. And whatever they were offering to actually help people is discredited. All right, I'm going to stop here. Bring about a psychiatric ward in every hospital in the land. Psychiatrists in every company, in every regiment of the nation's army, in government institutions. My God, they have been very successful. Financing a psychopolitical operation is difficult. The vast sums of money can be obtained from private patients. $120 an hour. No, 15 minutes. But you will get the millions from government when you have all of these people lobbying and when you have so many people who are made to go insane so you have shooters active shooters and what do we hear they're mentally ill they're mentally ill they're mentally ill more money from government because we need to help those who are mentally ill so that they don't pick up guns and run into schools or companies to shoot up people. When the psychopolitician is under attack, they can be under attack for malpractice or the family is suing them for injury. 
in all cases, his conduct of the situation should be calm and aloof and arrogant. The psychopolitical operative must have to hand, must have in hand innumerable documents which assert enormously encouraging figures on the subject of recovery by reasons of shock, brain surgery, drugs, general treatment. Not one of these cases cited need be real, but they should be documented and printed in such a fashion as to form excellent court evidence. And they should talk with a language that is hard to understand so that they are regarded as experts. You can't really understand mental illness, psychiatric disorders. Only the psychiatrist can. That gives them tremendous power and control. And psychology, psychiatry. They might use big words, but it's such a joke that it's so easily understood. So easily understood. Defamatory data concerning the person or connections the would-be attacker. You should have that data on file. Should be documented and should be used in such a way as to discourage any attacking. So, I know that I, uh, I, look, I am, I was going to go on and get a doctorate in clinical psychology. So psychology has always been a fascination of mine. And, and though they have taken over the field of psychology, they're using psychology on, on all Americans. You've got to understand how people manipulate other people. Otherwise, you are susceptible to being manipulated. All right. There's, there's much more. Um, so click on the link below if you want to uh, read more. Yes, violence, handling of the insane, violent remedies, straight jackets, restraints, shock treatment. The more violent the treatment, the more hopeless insanity will seem. God. But you know what? This pisses me off. Because we do really regard people in positions of authority or positions of power or those prestigious positions as something like wonderful they're envied. Oh, I wish I had that position. I wish I was the chair of this department. Sure. In the United States, we have been able to alter the works of William James and others into a more acceptable pattern and to place the tenets of Karl Marx, Pavlov, Lamarck, and the data of dialectic materialism into the textbooks of psychology and we will have chairs in departments of psychology throughout the United States. There will be our psychopolitical operatives and as the chair of psychology they will be granted much authority. It has an authoritative brain.
and we sure do like those rings. We sure do like those bells. We sure do like the superficial picture of success. But I think we need to go a little bit deeper and find out who these individuals who have been so successful in society, find out what they're about, what they are doing. Anyway, guys, we've been taken over. We have been taken over. It has been successful. On that note, hope you have a good evening. See you soon.